Crew Chief, Senior Master Sergeant Sean Gibbons. Right now the crew of Brody 36 are finishing the last of their checklist items and preparing to simulate a maximum effort takeoff, similar to those performed routinely during combat operations. Let's watch. weights up to 175,000 pounds with a combination of over 40,000 pounds of cargo and 43,000 pounds of fuel. It can climb to 40,000 feet. And cruise at over 320 knots. Oh, far surpassing the capabilities of previous models of the C-130. Here they come in a beautiful photo pass from the right, the C-130J Super Hercules! Like previous versions of the C-130, the J model is built to move people and supplies to forward areas in the combat zone. Formation or single ship airdrop or air land, the C-130 is the other community's jack of all trades. The J will carry up to 128 ground troops or 92 paratroops. It can carry vehicles or supplies and has the rigging aboard to carry up to 97 litter patients. The Herc driver's motto, anything, anytime, anywhere. as he approached Herky 3-6, simulating a low-level ingress into the objective area, keeping low to avoid radar detection. The crew used that random shallow approach you just saw to stay close to the landing zone. A 60-degree bank now and two times the force of gravity allows the aircraft to slow down to prepare for landing while remaining less than a mile from the runway. You know, Larry, you've got a lot of time flying this airplane. It looks like, I mean, aside from the fact that it can carry a whole lot of stuff, it looks like it's a little more spacious in the cockpit than the F-16. Not only is it more spacious than the F-16, yes, I flew the C-130, not the J, but the original C-130s and on up through the E and H model. Flew those things for about 10 years and 3,000 and some hours, but uh, not only is it more spacious than an F-16, it's more spacious than a 747. No kidding. You know, we flew those for about 10 years also. But uh, it's a big, wide cockpit. You kind of walk in, you can walk around the outside of the seat and put your stuff down and have a nice, pleasant wrist. Here they come. And they're coming in on a nice high approach now. This keeps them away from any ground fire. 
They come over the field, the airfield's nice and friendly, it's protected by friendly forces, and what they will do now is pull the power back, drop the nose down, the landing gear, and the wing flaps. You can already see those wing flaps extended down the trailing edge of the wing. That allows the aircraft wing to create sufficient lift to hold it in the sky while traveling at a slow speed because of course when you're coming in for a landing, you want to be traveling as slowly as you possibly can to use as little runway as possible. And what those wing flaps do by extending them out the trailing edge of the wing, it actually makes the whole wing seem like it's much more curved and a lot bigger area than when you're normally flying at high speed. Because as we know, regardless of what the song says, it ain't the wind beneath the wings that makes the lift. It's the wind coming up over the top of the wings that makes the lift. So with those flaps out there, it makes it look like the whole wing is even more curved to create a lot of lift as the wind comes over the top of the wings. Now here he comes. He's going to be making a, an approach to the field. Now, I'm not sure he's going to be landing from this altitude. Let's watch and see. That's to show you how quickly they can get down from altitude, and he could have continued that turn around and come on in for a landing. You know, when you look at the wingspan of the airplane, it's about 132 feet tip to tip. That, ladies and gentlemen, is actually 12 feet longer than the Wright brothers' first flight in December of 1903. Unbelievable. 12 seconds, 120 feet, and the Hercules wing is longer than that first flight. And it looks like he's going to be continuing on around to set up for his landing. Now, as he does this, after he touches down, you'll notice a difference in the sound of the engine. And actually, what he's going to be doing is changing the angle that those propeller blades attack the air and make the thrust go backwards to move the airplane forward. But what he's going to do is twist those blades around. The engines will keep moving the same direction, but he's just going to change the angle of the blades, and the thrust is actually going to go forward to help him stop this airplane in a remarkably short distance. So we'll know that once he touches down, he's going to be putting on full maximum anti-skid braking. He's going to reverse the, the propeller pitch to go into reverse thrust and project it forward. Looks like we're going to get a pass this time with the ramp extended. Now, this would be the configuration of the airplane if they were going to throw some bundles out of the back by parachute extraction. They'd let the parachute come out the back. It's tied onto a pallet full of cargo. They release it. The loadmaster releases, and out it comes, landing right on target. And I think in our combined arms demonstration a little bit later on, we'll get a chance to see a demonstration of the precision airdrop capabilities of the C-130J. Back in 1964, the Navy even looked at the C-130 as a possibility for a carrier-borne aircraft. And in fact, they landed one on an aircraft carrier. They did it many times. As a matter of fact, uh, James Flatley did it. He became a rear admiral later. He made over 20 touch and goes and a number of full stop non tail hook landings. Oh yeah, with the incredible C-130, the workhorse airlifter of Vietnam. And I believe we're going to get a landing out of it this time. Once again, we'll get a chance to see the incredible short field capabilities of the C-130. I mentioned before, in wartime, it can have a maximum weight of 175,000 pounds. And that's designed to be done on a 3,000 foot unimproved runway. And that means a dirt strip, 3,000 feet long, its maximum burst weight. One of the incredible things about the C-130 is he can take off, and well, I'll tell you about that little thing. Let's just watch this landing and listen to the sound of the engines and propellers as they use the reverse thrust and pull any skid brakes. You'll see how quickly it gets it stopped. Let's watch.
doesn't touch the brakes to stop it going backwards. He just moves it out of reverse thrust into forward thrust. Let's listen. There's the change. They just taxis away. If he were to touch the brakes while he's taxiing backwards, he could possibly park it on a tail and lift up the nose. Now, with the flag coming out of the front, that's Crew Chief Senior Master Sergeant Sean Gibbons. Put the flag out of the top. What an incredible airplane. So, in case you missed the taxiway after landing, no problem. Just back up and do it again. An incredible airplane, the C-130J of your Rhode Island Air National Guard.